Here in studio, we're back with the chairperson of the Finance and Planning Committee, Kuria Kimani, and uh, Honorable Nderitu Muri, the former governor of uh, Laikipia County. And let's clarify something, Honorable Chairman, uh, because you say that um, next week is the deadline for presentation of written memoranda. What happens to public hearings? Um, uh, thank you, Sam. So this is for the written submissions. So, so between that time and the, uh, the time we did the ad, I think it was Wednesday. Mm -hmm. The judicial thing was seven days, so then they will send the written submissions. But then after that, now we invite the members of the public to come and present. There's nothing that stops anybody from the Republic of Kenya to yeah. come to the Committee of Finance and National Planning and say, these are my views. I think this is punitive. I think we should reduce here. I think we should increase here. Uh, and, 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 and many other proposals. And, 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 and some, if you remember, we had this conversation last year. And, and Kenyans were asking, where is this finance bill coming from? Because that is the first time ever that we had such a robust conversation about the finance bill. So it's, it's a naked face. And, and this, and, and I would like to tell Kenyans, this is not an invention of Kuseki money. It's something that happens every year. Yeah during the budget cycle. But, but tell me, what are you going to do with the submissions, whether oral or written, that uh, members of the public bring to you? Uh, what we actually intend to do this year is to make sure that we, we actually respond to all of them. Bef by the time we're doing the report, last year we received 1,670 submissions. And out of those submissions, we, we actually uh, uh, they, 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 they largely formed our report. And we actually even uh, Attack them as the annexes uh, when I was tabling. Annexes that didn't inform your decision. They actually informed our decision. They so didn't. Can I give you an example? Give me an example. Affordable housing levy. You remember it? Yep. Uh, initially, it was 3% capped at 5,000. Yes. You had, you had the people, they told you, most, most of them told you they don't want it. You went and revised 1.5% without a cap. That is not what people told you. And most of the people, some, I yeah. dare say, told us that the 3% with a cap, what it meant is what it's going to, to incentivize you and I who are earning a lot of money. Because uh, in the absence of a cap, they actually, and, and I actually pick this from public participation, then they said that the 3% the without a cap would be discriminatory to those earning a lower income because there would not be equity in so the distribution. So those that told you they didn't want it, what did you do with them? <laughs> At the same time, we, we, there's a decision to make here. Uh, there are those that said we don't want it. There are some that said, and they were hundreds, they were actually hundreds of them. We actually received five, out of the 1,670, mm. we had around the last meetings where we had all these people living in the slum area telling us this is what we need. We had, we held up. They, they wrote to you? They wrote to us and they came physically to, you? to presentation. Uh, we had 500 and, you know what? Out of that, we had around 518. If I'm That's a third from what you had, if I remember from what you received. Saying that we need this, uh, this particular program, our housing program is... is I'm a, saying that's a third, third, isn't it? Let me give, give it a, another example. No, before the example, that's a third. So how do, you, how do you choose between what Kenyans are telling? And I'm raising this because already there's a proposal to revise the current uh, zero, rated, um, zero, zero rate on uh, VAT on bread to 16%. If majority are telling you we don't want it, and history has shown them that you only listen to a few and go with the original idea, just slightly changed, why should they trust you? Um, let's have this conversation after the, of, of the July 1st. Because uh, after we receive this view of the No, public, first to be too late. Hold on, Sam, oh, listen. listen. See, we are here, and you're not going to I'm, I'm saying. Here. So I'm telling you, yeah. you want to ask if you shall trust us this process. Yes. I will come here after the, first, the passing of the Finance Act and I'll demonstrate to you that we carried uh, on the majority of what the views of Kenyans want. And I'm assuring you, for example, let me even start with a basic example of, of, of the motor vehicle circulation tax. Uh, I think after my show yesterday on, 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 on I think NTV, mm -hmm. I switched on my social media this evening and whoa, there were a lot of views. And some even sent them to, to, to my WhatsApp. And there are very many concerns. Some of them are, for example, when you have the motor circulation tax being paid on insurance, what happens with the intermediaries? And the penalties on this motor vehicle circulation tax is made by the insurer. So what happens with the intermediaries in between? They're telling us that the 4 point, uh, I think the, the, the proposal is 3%. 2.5%. 2.5% uh, motor vehicle circulation tax. Uh, the, the cost of insurance alone is, uh, uh, the, 
the rate is usually between 2.5 percent and 4 percent, mm -hmm. and they're saying so. If I'm paying my motor vehicle circulation tax the same rate as that of the, my insurance cover, then I'm I may not really want to take that insurance cover. They're telling us that the cap of 100,000 shillings means that someone who drives a more expensive car will, by way of uh, the percentage, if you, if you take the percentage of how much they pay vis a vis the cost of to the car. To be lower than 2.5%. It's going to be lower than 2%. Okay. And let, all these views, I assure you, some, and, and I really want to. You're listening to them. Sure we'll get to the details. We're listening, to, we're listening yes. to you. We're taking your views seriously, and you're going to see your views being incorporated in our report. And right. subsequently, hopefully mm. that the plenary, the National Assembly will agree with our views and that we'll see in the Act, the Finance Act of 2024. You know what you just said might be controversial that the plenary will agree with your views. I said I hope not I, the I said views. I am hoping. But, uh, sorry, I, no, I, I, Sam, I'll get back to you. You, you misquoted me there. I said. I'm not misquoting you. I'm just <laughs> restating Sam, what you said. You can repeat what I said. I said <laughs> I hope that the plenary will agree with us. That's what I said. I hope. I didn't say the plenary will agree with us. I said I hope the plenary agrees with us. Okay, uh, Honorable Ndirito, uh, talk to us because Kenyans are concerned after the lessons of uh, Finance Act uh, 2023. Uh, should the people trust uh, Parliament and his committee this time? Um, I'm, you know, and it's interesting you raise the issue of trust um, because, and, and I could I, I look some, I couldn't help but uh, listen to your previous segment mm -hmm. about Remuru 3. Uh, citizens are gathering there mm -hmm. in large measure because of lack of trust. Because our honorable members told us last year that, sorry, we, we had not read the bill. <laughs> That's why we voted for it. And we've been appealing to them to read it. Mm. Um, because we elect members of parliament so that they can represent us uh, uh, in Parliament so that they can make decisions that do not hurt us, decisions that help us along. Um, so, uh, you know, we as citizens have gotten to a point of sacrifice our colleagues in government are saying we should make. It cannot be that you tax bread so that you go and renovate state house. I mean, that is not sacrifice. Uh, that is work that is actually intended by the constitution to be done by counties. All of those things are things you could cut out so that you don't have to tax uh, Kenyans more. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is why uh, citizens uh, are gathered in the Muru uh, tomorrow. I'm not sure that we need to be schooled. I'll just give you an example. Mm -hmm. If you take coffee, uh, if you go to the UK, a cup of coffee is two pounds and 50, uh, two, yeah, two pounds and 50. But what comes back to the farmer is less than one pence. So it's about like thinking about two shillings and 50 cents, and the farmer gets uh, less than Andururu. Mm -hmm. If you go to the US, what you will find is that the US economy uh, for coffee is more than $330 billion, mm -hmm. yet they don't grow coffee. So what we want, what we'll be talking about in Remuru is like this. How do we, as citizens of Kenya, as coffee cooperatives, own distribution and retail because that is where the money is in coffee. Mm -hmm. And those are the kinds of conversations okay. that we would like to have uh, and that those who have been elected, mm -hmm. we would really hope they engage in those uh, strategic conversations, not just theatrics and calling one another names. Okay, uh, I see what you did there. You took the chance to respond to two issues, both what uh, Moses Kuria said and what Kuria Kemani said. We're taking a short break here, but remember, we'll continue this conversation. So many proposals that have been highlighted um, by different experts. We're also looking at the finance bill itself and what you might be wondering about. We'll also be looking at some of your questions. Do stay tuned for that. We'll be back shortly.